Joe Glanchop, foreman here at Township Chevrolet for another edition of Tech Talk. And we're gonna do a little segment on uh, how-to videos. So we're gonna start off with uh, replacing fuses. Something pretty simple that most of you guys can do if you run into issues, uh, either at home or on the side of the road, and you need to get yourself by. So first we'll talk about what fuses are for. Fuses are, are there to protect the circuit and the modules and the components that that, uh, that power is feeding to that circuit. So uh, for instance, real simple one that if you're gonna replace one, you guys will probably come across more commonly would be your uh, outlet for plugging in your cell phone uh, or charging up something in your car or running your uh, GPS. Uh, if you overload that circuit, it'll pop a fuse and that fuse you'll find in the fuse box. Um, so the fuse boxes are usually located, there's one underneath the hood. There's usually a couple in the uh, passenger compartment. I've seen them under the rear seat before, and there's some in the trunk too. So if you go to your owner's manual, it'll give you all the information on where those uh, fuse boxes are located. It will also tell you uh, what fuses to use as far as amperage, and we'll go over that, and what that fuse circuit will run, and the corresponding number of where to find that fuse in the box that's how they that's how they uh, locate them so um, there's many different types of fuses we won't go through them all because there's more and more every day they bring out different styles um, the main ones you guys will probably be getting into will be your, your blade style fuses those are the ones that will run those things in the interior that you know you might have issues with um, there's two pins there's three pins uh, blades and we'll talk about that in a little bit so First, I guess we'll, uh, this Chev truck here, GMC truck, we've got a fuse box underneath the hood. We'll kind of just show you what it looks like under there and uh, how to change a fuse. Okay, so in this truck, this is the fuse panel. There's a little bit of information on the top of it. They don't want you pressure washing, obviously, and pushing water in where the electrical, electrical uh, components are. You can show a little symbol here for your fuses. and want you to lock this down tight to keep it sealed, keep it out of the elements, and then obviously you've got more information in your owner's manual. So once we remove the top here, you'll see there's a bunch of fuses and some relays. There's some empty areas here. All that means is that this truck uh, doesn't have some options that maybe this fuse box may feed on other vehicles. For instance, might be something like uh, electric running boards this truck doesn't have, so it doesn't have the spot for the fuse. So. Um, what we'll do is we'll just, if you're looking in here, you're not just looking at all the fuses, you're obviously going here to look for something specific. So let's say you hook up your trailer, uh, you know, so your park lights aren't working. So one of the things you'd check, obviously your connection and stuff, that didn't work. Maybe you want to check your fuses to make sure your fuses are good. Uh, Cause it's common for trailers, old wiring and stuff in and out of water, um, you know, blowing fuses. So we're going to go ahead and if you look here, you'll scroll through the list and it, it'll have a little kind of abbreviated description of the main thing that that fuse runs. So it may run more than one thing, but this is the main thing on the circuit. So if you scroll through and you look, each one's numbered and uh, you see this is the case fuses, which are the bigger, heavier square ones. And we get down here to the mini fuses and you'll see where it says, you'll see trailer park lamps. It tells me it's a 20 amp and it tells me it's in location number 15. So you go over here to the box and if you look, they'll all be numbered and you'll see number 15 here. It sits like this, that's kind of how it's laid out. And you look and then the fuse is number 20 is right there. So I won't take this one out, but if you want to, a pair of needing those pliers or something, with the key off, of course, you won't want the circuit live when you're doing it, just in case you ever cross anything out. You're gonna pull it out and obviously this is a 10 amp, but just to show you what it kind of looks like, that's what you would see. So what you really wanna to do to ideally check the fuse is you wanna you want to put a test light across these two little metal terminals on each side of the 10. Power's coming in one side and going out the other. If the fuse is broke or blown in the middle, obviously you won't have power on one side, so you know you have to replace that fuse. So um, you can take them out and look at them if you're stuck and you don't have one. Uh, it's just not, I've seen those fuses, they don't necessarily just blow in the middle. Sometimes they'll blow on the sides and it's really hard to see. Um, some of them have a darker plastic on them, so you can't really see through them. You hold them to the light. It's kind of hit or miss. Well, really putting it in is you know, testing it with a test lights thing to do. Or if you've got a spare fuse, just, just put a spare fuse in it and try it and see if the circuit starts to work. Uh, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure whatever you take out, you put back in. So if it's calls for 20, you put a 20 in. If you don't have a 20 amp fuse, you can go maybe a step down. So maybe go down to a 15 amp or a 10 amp if you had to and you're kind of stuck and you don't have access to any fuses, stores are closed or whatever. But you want, really want to put in the fuse that should be there. And if you do put the fuse in and it blows right away, well then obviously you've got a dead short somewhere. So you don't want to just keep trying fuses because you're not, you can still potentially ruin the circuit because this thing's only made really to pop once and, and then figure out what the problem is. So uh, if that happens, then obviously you'll have to uh, bring it in and get and see what's going on with it so um the other type of fuse that you can have uh, obviously i talked about and there's those j or the uh the case style fuses um 
they're a little harder to test. Obviously, you got this cover, which does come off. Sometimes they break and crack because the plastic gets brittle. Uh, you can see there's a little circular piece in there. That's what the uh, that's the metal for the for the uh, fuse to blow. Um, the fuse is there to protect the circuit. So if you go ahead and put something in heavier than what this is, you potentially next weakest thing in line. So whether it be the wire or the module or the component could burn up and then you could be into a real expensive repair or your harness could, could burn up. It, you obviously generating some heat there. If you're in something with a heavier circuit with a 30 or a 40 or even a sometimes 50, 60 amp fuses, the bigger maxi fuses, you're really gonna generate a lot of heat and you could actually cause a fire. So you definitely wanna make sure you put in the right one. There's these fuses here and there are three blade fuse instead of a two. Essentially, it's just two fuses in one. You get your power coming in one side, which feeds two, uh, two separate components or two separate circuits. Um, like I say, you're gonna have the same style set up in, in the interior on the instrument cluster fuse box or in the trunk, uh, your same sort of legend thing. Sometimes they're not on here. Sometimes you'll just have numbers on some of the uh, different makes and models. Uh, but they'll have this similar thing in a lot more detail in the uh, owner's manual. Um, the other type of fuse you can have uh, in some circuits, usually on a power window or a power seat, something in that nature that runs an uh, electric motor is circuit breakers. Circuit breakers are basically a fuse that can reset themselves. You get a little bimetallic strip in there. As it generates heat, it lifts off and disconnects, and when it cools back down again, it touches. And the reason why that's there is because, for instance, in your windows in the middle of wintertime, they're froze up. You're trying to put your window down, it's kind of froze. You keep trying to push it to kind of break that ice free on your on your window, and you're putting a lot more amperage through the circuit, and it can cause some heat. And if you just had a fuse in there, obviously you'd be replacing fuses every time your window stuck. So it just kind of gives you that little, uh, you know, where you can try it a few times and it's 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 protecting itself, but then you don't have to keep replacing the fuse every time. So circuit breakers are uh, a different thing. You can't test them like this. Uh, you need an ohm meter to kind of check them to make sure they're working good. Uh, they don't usually go that often. I've seen a lot of cars from the 80s and 90s that come in here with the original circuit breaker still in them. So uh, Most cars will have, uh, in one of the fuse panels, will have a fuse removal tool. It's usually a little white piece of plastic. It's usually on the cover uh, for, for grabbing onto these and pulling them out. If you don't, pair of needle those just works fine. Sometimes your fingers, but they can be tight in there. Uh, another thing that you'll have on the cover too is sometimes they'll have a spot for three or four extra fuses or sometimes in the box they'll actually have the spares uh, sitting in the fuse panel uh, and usually you can tell those are the spares when you it'll say on the on the legend of course but when you go to pull them out they'll be uh, really loose because they're not in, making any contact in there. Um, you know if you do if you are using them you should replace them because obviously you'll need them and you'll forget all about it and next thing you know you'll need a fuse someday for an emergency and you go to replace the fuse and it won't be there so something else something else to think about when you're replacing your fuses um other than that that's pretty much all the information when you're done with your fuse if your circuit's working fine obviously if you plug whatever you plugged in let's say to your uh your uh, power outlet, it blew it again. Obviously that device has an issue or maybe it's drawing too much uh, amperage for that circuit. So that's something for you to look at too. And if you have any questions about that, you could bring that into us and we could, we could help you out determine whether or not that whatever you're trying to plug in is maybe too much for that circuit. So uh, that's been uh, Tech Talk and kind of how to replace a fuse. Any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Any suggestions on some videos and some quick how-tos, let us know. And uh, to get uh, notification when new videos come out, just subscribe and we look forward to seeing you.